Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Today's going to be a short but important video. We're going to outline a bunch of mistakes that Pl Plarium would rather you probably not know about. Now, the intent here isn't to just crap on Raid Shadow Legends. I mean, part of you should love this game. Otherwise, why are you watching this channel on YouTube, right? We all enjoy the game. However, there are some pitfalls, some traps, if you will, inside the game, which again can take advantage, especially of newer players. If you have a friend or family member or a new clan mate that is just starting to kind of get into the game, make sure you send this video their way because again, it's important stuff. It's going to save you a lot of aggravation, uh, wasted time, and what's worse is wasted money, wasted resources in this game. So anyway, guys, let's start out. Let's just kind of jump into it. Let's start out with one of the biggest ones. We talk about this all the time, but when investing in champions in this side, inside this game, people have the tendency to just pull a champion and, and, and kind of always look at their kit optimistically okay like oh i think it could help me in this little area this little niche area of the game but the truth behind this game is especially in the early you know the early stages the early game of raid shadow legends a lot of the free champions are really really good you don't have to look that far outside free and accessible champions going all the way up until the daily log and reward champions like sill of the drakes to build a very solid team inside this game. Uh, and then again, in the early game, you can farm a lot of champions that truthfully are not that bad. Champions like uh, Shield Guard, champions like basically any uncommon champion, Armager as well, you can just pull them right out of Mystery Shards. You can farm champions like War Maiden as well, like Greybeard as well. And then the Daily Log and Reward champions, Grush the Mangler, Dark Helhain, again, so the Dra- they're going to help you out quite a bit along your journey, and they're 100% free. So no, what I'm saying is not not to never invest in a champion, forgive the double negative, but think long and hard about the three factors that we always advise here on the channel before you do invest in a champion. Factor number one is what is their value over replacement on my team right now? Factor number two is are they end game viable? Can I use this champion all the way until the end game? Are they good? Are end game players are my clan mates who are further along in the game than I am are they a fan of these champions so think about uh think about end game viability on these champions and then the overall versatility on champions so important as well right you want to invest in a champion that you know that you can use in multiple areas this game tricks you to always giving a a champion always releasing it uh, or making accessible a champion that's just ever so incrementally better than what you might have in one specific area in the game to kind of talk you into using your hard-earned resources there because resources in this game are scarce rather than, again, on a more well-rounded champion who might not be, you know, the sexiest new item inside the game. So always, again, at the end of the day, consider those three factors when investing in any champion and don't always get caught up with the new and shiny object. They're always releasing new amazing champions in this game. Sometimes the answer is right in front of your face anyway. You might already have a perfect team in a specific area. There's no need to waste resources on upgrading an incremental upgrade or investing in an incremental upgrade in that area. All right, number two is buying deals during an event. Uh, so listen, if you are going to spend money on this game, totally cool. I have a free to play account and I have my main account right here where I do spend money. But keep in mind, guys, especially shard pull events, double time events, 10 times events, they're going to hit you with a bunch of offers. Now, what you're more, what the smarter way to approach a situation is if you are inclined to spend money in this game, wait until great offers come about outside of events, right? Because usually you're going to get the better deal. Usually during events, they throw all these deals at you for all these ancient sacred void shards or whatever. And it turns out they're a little bit more expensive, a little bit more pricey because they know that's when people want the shards. So again, be very, very in tune with the offers that you are getting and when you're getting them. If you see a good offer, even though it's not a double time uh, shard pull event, consider making or making that purchase 
outside the event and then saving your shards or saving your resources. Same thing with big uh, dungeon crawler events where you know you have to spend energy essentially in to get in translating to in-game rewards. Just know the energy is usually going to be bumped up a little bit during those times. Okay, so always try to take advantage of those deals in the off season, if you will. If you want to buy a pool, well, probably buy it right after the summer. You want to buy skis? Probably buy it right after the winter season is ending, okay? Same thing applies to Raid Shadow Legends. Next up is buying artifacts in the shop, right? Artifacts and accessories in the shop, unless you're a whale and you're buying speed artifacts for the sub rolls of speed, then it's really not for you. The only exception might be to get your very first like dark elf accessories for Kale if you just have trouble clearing spider or something like that. However, even those situations, you can farm those accessories and artifacts oftentimes way easier than, you know, spend, I guess not easier than spending money, but way more efficiently than spending money. You can get those artifacts just by a few dungeon runs. You're better off spending your money on energy to get those artifacts. You'll get a lot more bang for your buck. Next is going to be ignoring the epics in old school fusions. So we have a fusion coming up or in the game right now, and a lot of people just immediately look at the end game. They immediately look at the finish line, the legendary fusion that is available to them. And a lot of people actually look right past champions that would have really helped them who are epics. Uh, there's nothing wrong with fusing just or, or building or unlocking just the epics in these fusions, even in the fusion that we have coming up right now in the game. By the time you're watching this, it's already in game. A lot of the epics or a couple of the epics look very, very good. Oftentimes in the past is too. Some of the epics are better than legendaries. So just because you don't like a fusion legendary, for example, doesn't mean that you should not pay attention to fusions and go after some of those epic champions or even rare champions sometimes that you need to fuse those champions. Fuse epics, look at all four of the epic champions involved in a fusion. Oftentimes, those are some of the best champions in the game. Uh, next up is going to be uh, silver farming anywhere but spider, okay? So listen, once you're able to clear higher stages of spider's den, I like to say, I think uh, 16 and or 14 and up, whenever you can actually farm six star accessories, uh, you should get all your silver from spider's den okay if you're farming campaign for silver you're doing it wrong that's a great place for experience it's the best place to level up food in the game don't get me wrong but if you're just interested in silver spider will pay way more dividends in terms of silver per energy just make sure again you're farming in brutal difficulty stage 12 3 12 3 of brutal is the best efficiency for xp and then spider is the best efficiency for silver farming not campaign okay so definitely stay with sil uh stay with spider for silver don't silver farm in campaign it's going to be way more costly again in terms of energy next up is going to be upgrading champions because of rarity i'm just going to bang out a few lightning speed mistakes for you guys so upgrading champions just because they're legendary just because they're epic is a mistake, okay? Uh, generally speaking, the rarity of a champion is a good indicator to how powerful they may or may not be, but there are some epics in this game that are better than legendaries. There are some rares in this game that are way better than legendaries. Coltart, for example, is better than half of the legendaries in the game. Maybe even 75% of the legendaries in the game, and I'm not being hyperbolic. She has way higher use rates even in the end game. So don't just look at the rarity. I see this a lot with, with kind of newish players, meaning like the first six months people play the game, they get a legendary, no matter how awful that legendary is, boom, they're going all in. And what's more is not only are they wasting resources on a crappy legendary champion, but they're also wasting resources that they could have used on a way better epic or even rare or even uncommon champion sometimes. So don't just look at the rarity and, you know, some lightning. These are bonus tips for you guys at the same time, too. Don't use your legendary skill tomes on epic or rare champions and don't use bad legendary champions for food ever, ever, ever. Put them in their vault. Uh, Plarium does have a tendency of buffing the higher rarity champions in this game, like legendary, before the 
they're going to buff uh, epics or especially rare or uncommon champions. And last but not least, guys, thinking that time matters is a mistake in this game. Plarium is always going to kind of implement little psychological tricks to you guys and i'm being a little pessimistic here because i actually like that they implemented the term the ter how many turns it took you to win a battle in doom tower i actually love that but it's also psychological right because it's putting you against the rest of your clan mates and it's making you think that you know in order to be optimized in this game you need to be fast in this game who has the time no one and the truth of the matter is, guys, energy is a finite resource for everybody, no matter how much money you're spending in this game. And at the end of the day, all you're really worried about is if you can beat a run, especially if you're going to start farming it, you know, running the same level of uh, a dungeon 20 times, 30 times, 100 times in a row. All you care about here, especially if you're doing it overnight or something like that, is that you have a 100% success rate. If it takes you three minutes instead of two minutes, what do you care? You're sleeping anyway. It's a little, it's a little kind of subtle thing, but you don't need to continue investing on a team that already has a 100% success rate in a level 20 dungeon. You feel me? All right, guys, those are all the tips that I have for you guys. Kind of mistakes to avoid, again, to take full advantage of what this game has to offer without kind of suffering from any of the pain points or the traps this game also has to offer. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know and I'll do more like it. Thank you for watching all the way till the end. And as always, take care, guys.